So the fires we're going to be talking about are divided into four categories. Class A fires involve solid fuel. That would be something like paper or the wood in a house. Class B fires involve a liquid fuel. That would be the grease left in a pan or a puddle of gasoline. Class C fires are electrical. Those are started by sparks coming out of electrical outlets and things like that. And class D fires are metals. Believe it or not, metals will burn, and they burn extremely quickly and extremely hot, which makes them very dangerous. Each of these is going to have a different way that you'll want to put it out. We're going to start with class A, solid fuel. Look at the papers. Look at the papers. Right here. So typically that'll be something like paper or a house. Those you're going to want to put out using something just as simple as water. Water actually happens to be really great for a Class A fire because of two properties that it has. One is what's called heat capacity. That means that water is able to absorb a lot of heat from its surroundings without rising in temperature. That's great because it means when you put water on a fire, it'll absorb all the heat. If you get rid of all the heat, you get rid of the fire. The second thing that water has that's really great is when it hits the fire, it will vaporize. That will cause it to expand as it moves from a liquid into a gas, and that expansion will push the surrounding air away from the fire. That's great because it means that the fire will suffocate. So next we're going to talk about Class B fires, which involve a liquid fuel. That would be something like grease. The big difference here is that if you try to put water on a liquid fuel, you'll just kind of push the liquid around. Now, considering that the liquid is on fire, that means you're pushing the fire around, which isn't a great idea. So instead, you're going to want to just suffocate the fire by putting something like carbon dioxide on it. And you can get carbon dioxide-based fire extinguishers. If you don't have something like that, though, you can also use baking soda. When heated up, baking soda will actually produce carbon dioxide. So if you have a grease fire, sprinkling carbon dioxide in the form of baking soda onto it We'll suffocate the fire and put it out. Next, we're going to talk about Class C fires, which are electrical fires. Now, because the energy that's starting the fire comes from the electricity rather than from a chemical reaction, putting a chemical on it to absorb the energy isn't really going to work. Instead, what's most important is recognizing that it is an electrical fire, turning off the source of electricity, and then because it's electrical, you don't want to use something like water that could conduct electricity. So you'll just use something like carbon dioxide or baking soda. Now the last type of fire is a metal fire. Remember, metals will burn, and they burn extremely violently and extremely quickly. You can't use something like water to put out a metal fire because it will actually explode. That means dumping a whole lot of sand over the metal. about a very special kind of fire, which is a lithium battery fire. Now, lithium batteries are used in commercial products such as laptops and cell phones. They're very valuable, but they're also very dangerous when things go wrong. To see why, we're going to have to look into what is in a battery. There are solid components, such as the cathode and anode. There's also a liquid component, which is fairly similar to gasoline. That's called an electrolyte, and it is between the cathode and anode. Because this is a battery, it's obviously also an electrical fire. And lithium, being a metal, makes it a class D fire. So we have to think a little bit about how we might want to put this out. Remember, we can get rid of the heat, the oxidizer, or the fuel. We can't use carbon dioxide or sand because the battery is contained. If we try to add sand or carbon dioxide, we're not actually separating the fuel from the oxidizer or the heat. And we can't use water because it's a class D fire because of the lithium. It means if we try to add water, it'll explode. That makes the problem a whole lot worse.
So to determine what was the best way to put out a lithium battery fire, the Air Force actually conducted tests and they used a variety of different chemicals and materials. And what they found was actually rather surprising. Their answer was that to put out a lithium battery fire, you do want to add water, even though that will make it explode. The reason for this is that water is very good at removing the heat. And remember, the oxidizer and the fuel are contained within the package. That means the only way to get a lithium battery fire out is to remove the heat. What that means is that you can't use a little bit of water. That'll just make it explode. You have to use so much water that it'll absorb all of the energy from both the fire and the explosion you're causing by adding the water. A massive fire burns at a chemical plant in Texas. Magnablend's premises, 30 miles south of Dallas, going up in smoke in spectacular fashion. The company manufactures chemicals for a number of industries, including oil fields, agriculture, pet food and feed supplements. Firefighters trying to bring the huge blaze under control. Heavy plumes of black smoke rising high into the sky. Children at a nearby elementary school told to stay inside. Fears that potentially dangerous gases could be released by the fire.